Welcome to part two, which is about the data link layer. The first topic we will look at is data link layer functionality. So the purpose of this part of the course is for you to get an overview of data link layer functionality, uh, to understand the reason for having the multiple access protocols, to understand basic solutions for the multiple access problem with fixed and random assignments, and to have some knowledge of examples of protocols and systems and the examples that I will be using, they are Ethernet and IEEE 802.11, so wireless LAN. Um, multiple access control, you can say it's a sub-layer of the data link layer, just to make it clear. And as usual, I will recommend you to take notes during the lectures, and especially uh, observing those uh, learning points that are here. And the learning points will also be mentioned directly for each video. So for this specific video, the learning objectives is to get an overview of the data link layer functionality. So if we look at what is the data link layer, we can look at the OSI model and we can look at TCP IP. So in the OSI model, we are talking about layer 2, and in TCP IP, we are talking about the host network layer. So what does the data link layer, what, what the data link layer really does is that it provides services to the network layer. And the drawing here illustrates basically that when we are talking about the data link layer protocol, we are talking about two computers or two entities which are communicating directly to each other. So in the case here, we have been drawing two routers which are communicating on layer 3, so on the network layer. Uh, and if we have multiple of them, then between each pair of routers, we will establish one connection which is based on layer 2. So they will be, so to speak, directly connected to each other. So in this data link layer functionality, we provide services to the network layer. So what we do is we do framing, which is about breaking the information into frames, uh, where the frame size depends on the protocol we're using. We can use error control, so to deal with transmission errors, this can be done in different ways. And we can have throw control, which basically is about awarding to swamp the receivers, so not sending faster than the receivers able to uh, receive it. Um, we'll also be talking about multiple access control. That's also a part of the data link layer. So when it comes to the framing, this can be done in different ways. Basically, what we are interested in is that we can see when one frame is ending and another frame is beginning. Uh, this can be done in different ways. Uh, the simplest way would be to do some character count to say that each frame has a certain size, each frame contains a certain amount of characters. That's simple and there is no overhead. The problem is that if you lose track because of an error or similar, the, then you have a problem. So if you just lose one um, character in this setup, then the rest will be not synchronized. Um, so in order to do synchronization, we would like to use flag bytes. So flag bytes are basically telling when uh, we're ending and beginning. So uh, we are starting and ending with a flag, but of course we can also do physical layer coding violations, but not go more into that. So the next slide will be more about um, the framing. So what we do or what we want to do is that we want to put a flag uh, in the beginning and in the end of each um, segment or each uh, frame. And the problem with doing this is if it looks similar to what would be already the content of the, of the frame, so we have to uh, find a way to ensure that uh, we don't have some coincidental content of a frame which will look like a flag. And the way of doing it is to do what is called uh, byte stuffing, meaning that if we have an original flag character, this is what you see in the first line on figure B. So if you have an original character here, we have kind of to stuff it with something so we know it is not a flag. And in the case here, we uh, put in an escape uh, before the flag, meaning that uh, if we see the escape flag, then we know that uh, this, is, um, uh, this is not a flag uh, in, the, in the flag sense. Of course, then we also need to be aware that this could happen, that there was an escape before we would insert the flag, and we need to take that also into account. And these different uh, solutions you can see in the figure B if you take a little bit of time to study it carefully. Next, we'll look into error control. 
When we are looking at error control, we can code our messages with, our, with either error correction or error detection codes. If we use error correction codes, it allows us to detect and repair a number of errors. And how many we can detect and repair really depends on which coding scheme we're using. In general, we can say that the more errors we want to detect or correct, the higher overhead. Also, error correction has a higher overhead than error detection because we need to send more data along with our frames in order to, to do this kind of corrections. On the other hand, it has the advantage that we can do corrections without having to do retransmissions. So it allows us to do correction by only having looking and the receiving side. This is especially useful in noisy environments because if we have to retransmit many uh, packets or many um, frames, then these could also contain errors and we would have to transmit them again and again. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, error detection codes which has less overhead. Uh, they allow us to detect errors so we can deal with them, but they don't allow the, um, the repair or the correction. So in case we receive a, a, a damaged frame and we're using error detection, we can choose to discard it or we have to ask for a retransmission. Uh, this is more useful in, in stable networks or very reliable networks where errors are unlikely to happen because then we can benefit from the lower overhead and it's not so often that we will have to retransmit frames. And that is ending this video. So please don't hesitate to get in touch if you have any questions or comments. Thanks.